That we may more concretely describe the law upon which this lesson is based, let us embody the law in a code of ethics, such as one who wishes to follow literally the injunction of the golden rule might appropriately adopt as follows. My Code of Ethics 1. I believe in the golden rule as the basis of all human conduct. Therefore, I will never do to another person that which I would not be willing for that person to do to me if our positions were reversed. 2. I will be honest even to the slightest detail in all my transactions with others, not alone because of my desire to be fair with them, but because of my desire to impress the idea of honesty on my own subconscious mind, thereby weaving this essential quality into my own character. 3. I will forgive those who are unjust toward me, with no thought as to whether they deserve it or not, because I understand the law through which forgiveness of others strengthens my own character, and wipes out the effects of my own transgressions in my subconscious mind. 4. I will be just, generous, and fair with others always, even though I know that these acts will go unnoticed and unrecorded, in the ordinary terms of reward, because I understand and intend to apply the law through the aid of which one's own character is but the sum total of one's own acts and deeds. 5. Whatever time I may have to devote to the discovery and exposure of the weaknesses and faults of others, I will devote, more profitably, to the discovery and correction of my own. 6. I will slander no person, no matter how much I may believe another person may deserve it, because I wish to plant no destructive suggestions in my own subconscious mind. 7. I recognize the power of thought as being an inlet leading into my brain from the universal ocean of life. Therefore, I will set no destructive thoughts afloat upon that ocean lest they pollute the minds of others. 8. I will conquer the common human tendency toward hatred and envy and selfishness and jealousy and malice and pessimism and doubt and fear, for I believe these to be the seed from which the world harvests most of its troubles. 9. When my mind is not occupied with thoughts that tend toward the attainment of my definite chief aim in life, I will voluntarily keep it filled with thoughts of courage and self-confidence and goodwill toward others and faith and kindness and loyalty and love for truth and justice. For I believe these to be the seed from which the world reaps its harvest of progressive growth. 10. I understand that a mere passive belief in the soundness of the Golden Rule philosophy is of no value whatsoever either to myself or to others. Therefore, I will actively put into operation this universal rule for good in all my transactions with others. 11. I understand the law through which the operation of which my own character is developed from my own acts and thoughts. Therefore, I will guard with care all that goes into its development. 12. Realizing that enduring happiness comes only through helping others find it, that no act of kindness is without its reward, even though it may never be directly repaid, I will do my best to assist others when and where the opportunity appears. You have noticed frequent reference to Emerson throughout this course. Every student of the course should own a copy of Emerson's essays, and the essay on compensation should be read and studied at least every three months. Observe, as you read this essay, that it deals with the same law as that upon which the golden rule is based. Every man takes care that his neighbor does not cheat him, but a day comes when he begins to care that he does not cheat his neighbor. Then all goes well. He has changed his market cart into a chariot of the sun. A trifling kindness here and there is but a simple small affair, yet if your life has sown this free, Wide shall your happy harvest be. No idle person is ever safe, whether he be rich or poor, white or black, educated or illiterate. Booker T. Washington There is no defeat except from within. There is really no insurmountable barrier save your own inherent weakness of purpose. Emerson You have not fulfilled every duty unless you have fulfilled that of being pleasant. Charles Buxton there are people who believe that the Golden Rule philosophy is nothing more than a theory, and that it is in no way connected with an immutable law. 
they have arrived at this conclusion because of personal experience wherein they rendered service to others without enjoying the benefits of direct reciprocation. How many are there who have not rendered service to others that was neither reciprocated nor appreciated? I am sure that I have had such an experience, not once, but many times, and I am equally sure that I will have similar experiences in the future. Nor will I discontinue rendering service to others merely because they neither reciprocate nor appreciate my efforts. And here is the reason. When I render service to another, or indulge in an act of kindness, I store away in my subconscious mind the effect of my efforts, which may be likened to the charging of an electric battery. By and by, if I indulge in a sufficient number of such acts, I will have developed a positive dynamic character that will attract to me people who harmonize with or resemble my own character. Those whom I attract to me will reciprocate the acts of kindness and the service that I have rendered others. Thus the law of compensation will have balanced the scales of justice for me bringing back from one source the results of service that I rendered through an entirely different source. You have often heard it said that a salesman's first sale should be to himself, which means that unless he first convinces himself of the merits of his wares, he will not be able to convince others. Here again enters this same law of attraction, for it is a well-known fact that enthusiasm is contagious. And when a salesman shows great enthusiasm over his wares, he will arouse a corresponding interest in the minds of others. You can comprehend this law quite easily by regarding yourself as a sort of human magnet that attracts those whose characters harmonize with your own. In thus regarding yourself as a magnet that attracts to you all who harmonize with your dominating characteristics and repels all who do not so harmonize, you should keep in mind also the fact that you are the builder of that magnet. Also, that you may change its nature so that it will correspond to any ideal that you may wish to set up and follow. And most important of all, you should keep in mind the fact that this entire process of change takes place through thought. Your character is but the sum total of your thoughts and deeds. This truth has been stated in many different ways throughout this course. Because of this great truth, it is impossible for you to render any useful service or indulge in any act of kindness toward others without benefiting thereby. Moreover, it is just as impossible for you to indulge in any destructive act or thought without paying the penalty in the loss of a corresponding amount of your own power. Positive thought develops a dynamic personality. Negative thought develops a personality of an opposite nature. In many of the preceding lessons of this course, and in this one, definite instructions are given as to the exact method of developing personality through positive thought. These instructions are particularly detailed in Lesson 3 on self-confidence. In that lesson, you have a very definite formula to follow. All of the formulas provided in this course are for the purpose of helping you consciously to direct the power of thought in the development of a personality that will attract to you those who will be of help in the attainment of your definite chief aim. You need no proof that your hostile or unkind acts toward others bring back the effects of retaliation. Moreover, this retaliation is usually definite and immediate. Likewise, you need no proof that you can accomplish more by dealing with others in such a way that they will want to cooperate with you. If you mastered the eighth lesson on self-control, you now understand how to induce others to act toward you as you wish them to act through your own attitude toward them. The law of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth is based upon the self-same law as that upon which the golden rule operates. This is nothing more than the law of retaliation with which all of us are familiar. Even the most selfish person will respond to this law because he cannot help it. If I speak ill of you, even though I tell the truth, you will not think kindly of me. Furthermore, you will most likely retaliate in kind. But if I speak of your virtues, you will think kindly of me, and when the opportunity appears, you will reciprocate in kind in the majority of instances. Through the operation of this law of attraction, the uninformed are constantly attracting trouble and grief and hatred and opposition from others by their unguarded words and destructive acts. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We have heard that injunction expressed thousands of times, Yet how many of us understand the law upon which it is based? 
To make this injunction somewhat clearer, it might be well to state it more in detail, about as follows. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you, bearing in mind the fact that human nature has a tendency to retaliate in kind. Confucius must have had in mind the law of retaliation when he stated the golden rule philosophy in about this way. Do not unto others that which you would not have them do unto you. And he might well have added an explanation to the effect that the reason for his injunction was based upon the common tendency of man to retaliate in kind. Those who do not understand the law upon which the golden rule is based are inclined to argue that it will not work for the reason that men are inclined toward the principle of exacting an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, which is nothing more nor less than the law of retaliation. If they would go a step further in their reasoning, they would understand that they are looking at the negative effects of this law, and that the selfsame law is capable of producing positive effects as well. In other words, if you would not have your own eye plucked out, then ensure against this misfortune by refraining from plucking out the other fellow's eye. Go a step further and render the other fellow an act of kindly, helpful service, and through the operation of this same law of retaliation, he will render you a similar service. And if he should fail to reciprocate your kindness, what then? You have profited nevertheless, because of the effect of your act on your own subconscious mind. Thus, by indulging in acts of kindness and applying always the golden rule philosophy, you are sure of benefit from one source, and at the same time you have a pretty fair chance of profiting from another source. It might happen that you would base all of your acts toward others on the golden rule without enjoying any direct reciprocation for a long period of time, and it might so happen that those to whom you rendered those acts of kindness would never reciprocate, but meantime you have been adding vitality to your own character and sooner or later this positive character which you have been building will begin to assert itself, and you will discover that you have been receiving compound interest on compound interest in return for those acts of kindness which appeared to have been wasted on those who neither appreciated nor reciprocated them. Remember that your reputation is made by others, but your character is made by you. You want your reputation to be a favorable one, but you cannot be sure that it will be for the reason that it is something that exists outside of your own control in the minds of others. It is what others believe you to be. With your character, it is different. Your character is that which you are, as the results of your thoughts and deeds. You control it. You can make it weak, good, or bad. When you are satisfied and know in your mind that your character is above reproach, you need not worry about your reputation for it is as impossible for your character to be destroyed or damaged by anyone except yourself as it is to destroy matter or energy. It was this truth that Emerson had in mind when he said, A political victory, a rise of rents, the recovery of your sick or the return of your absent friend, or some other quite external event, raises your spirits, and you think your days are prepared for you. Do not believe it. It can never be so. Nothing can bring you peace but yourself. Nothing can bring you peace but the triumph of principles. One reason for being just toward others is the fact that such action may cause them to reciprocate in kind, but a better reason is the fact that kindness and justice toward others develop positive character in all who indulge in these acts. You may withhold from me the reward to which I am entitled for rendering you helpful service, but no one can deprive me of the benefit I will derive from the rendering of that service insofar as it adds to my own character.